In our last couple of videos, we spent some time talking about selection structures, if, if, else, else if, uh, switch, some of the different structures that let our programs make decisions. What I want to do in this particular uh, example is to take a look at some of the repetition structures that PHP makes available to us. Repetition structures are, of course, what people typically refer to as loops, and PHP has a variety of different ones that we have available to us to use. One of the first and most basic repetition structures that PHP makes available is called the while loop. The while loop has the same basic syntax that you see in other C-type languages. It starts off with the keyword while, followed by a set of parentheses. Those parentheses would again contain a Boolean expression, something that's true or false. We then have that followed with a set of curly braces, which are not required, but are typically a good idea. The curly braces enclose what's called the loop body, essentially the collection of code that will continue to execute as long as the condition inside the parentheses is true. So, as an example, I could do something like to create a variable. I'm going to call it count. I'm going to initialize it to a value of 0. Then, for my test in my while loop, I'm going to say while count is less than 10. Inside the while loop, I could do something like, for example, display the value of the count variable followed by a break and I'm going to increment the value of the count variable. In this particular case where I have the increment of the count variable happening in its own expression, its own statement, its own line of code, it doesn't really matter here if I pre or post increment. Either one should work just fine. Uh, just to make this look a little bit nicer, I think I'm also going to take and put this inside a div. So as this example goes on, it won't get too cluttered up. Let's do it this way. All right, let's take a look at this in the browser. Jump over to the browser, I hit refresh, and this is what I get. Uh, pretty predictable output, hopefully, for most of you. Here inside this particular div, I'm getting the values of 0 through 9 displayed. Of course, the way that that is working is we start off with a value of 0 for our count variable. When we get to the while loop, we check. We see that the count variable has a value that's less than 10. That's true, so we display the value of the count variable. We display 0. We then increment the value of the count variable, so count becomes 1. At that point, we've reached the bottom of the loop body, so we go back to the top of the while loop and we retest. Is the value of count less than 10? Count is now 1. That's still less than 10, so true. So we display the value of the count variable and we increment. We, of course, keep doing that until eventually we get to the point where count has the value of 9. When count has the value of 9, we display 9, we add 1 to it, count becomes 10. When we then go back up to the top of the while loop and check to see if count is less than 10, at that point that becomes false. Since it's false at that point, that means the while loop will no longer repeat. So we will then, from that point, drop down to the end of the while loop and continue on to whatever it is that the script is supposed to do next. That's really all there is to a basic while loop in PHP. It has all the basic parts you typically see in counter-controlled while loops. Um, generally, you would want to remember to initialize a variable, to test that variable, and then to change that variable in some way inside the loop itself. Forgetting any one of those things will more than likely cause you to end up creating an infinite loop a loop that never ends. There are not many situations in PHP where an infinite loop is going to be your desired outcome, so that's probably not something that you're going to be looking for. So try to remember to always initialize, test, and change account variable. Moving on then to a second type of, of loop that PHP makes available to us. Let me go ahead and set up a div to display its output. This next type of loop that PHP is going to give us is a for loop which again is probably one that you have dealt with at one time or another. Right? For loops in PHP start off with the keyword for followed by a set of parentheses and then a set of curly braces. The keyword for just starts the loop. The curly braces, just like with the while loop, contain the loop body, the code that will be repeated. Where the for loop of course is very different is what goes inside the parentheses. With the while loop that we did a minute ago, there were three important things that we needed to do. We needed to initialize, we needed to test, we needed to change a variable. With a for loop, what happens is we have all three of those parts actually contained inside the parentheses of the for loop itself. I could, for example, create a variable called i, initialize it to a value of 0. I could then do something like, say, while i is less than 10 and then I could say I++. plus plus. So I'm doing my initialization, test, and change all there as part of the syntax of the for loop itself. 
Inside the loop body, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to display the value of i followed by a break. And if I jump over to my browser and refresh, you can see that I get the exact same thing that I got a minute ago with the while loop, 0 through 9, no digits missing. The basic process of how this for loop is working is pretty much the same thing. When the for loop is first executed, we execute the initialization, so we create a variable called i and give it a value of 0. That then does not happen again. The next thing that happens is we perform the test. Is i less than 10? If it is, we then execute the loop body. So we print out the current value of i, which would be 0 in that case. Once we've executed the loop body, we then execute the change, the last segment here of the for loop syntax. So i becomes 1. Then we retest. That pattern then continues where we do loop body, change, test, then loop body, change test, loop body, change test, until eventually the test fails. When the test eventually comes back as false, right, it's no longer true, then at that point that loop is complete and we go on from the end of the for loop and execute whatever code comes next. So the while loop and the for loop both, whichever one is most convenient for you in any given situation, can be used to do essentially the exact same thing, counter-controlled repetition. It doesn't really matter in most cases which one you choose to use. I would say to a large extent it's just a matter of personal preference. I personally, when I can, when it feels comfortable and right, prefer to use the for loop. It's more compact. I think it's a little bit easier to read since all of the important parts of controlling the loop are part of the for syntax itself. There's less looking around or, f or potentially forgetting to include different pieces of it that you might, uh, might, might have problems with if you're putting together a while loop. The last type of, of loop structure, the last type of iteration structure that I have to show you in PHP is, again, essentially like another type of for loop. It can be used in a lot of the same situations. Let me kind of show you how the overlap here works. Let me create another div for myself. This one for each as. Before I show you the actual new loop, let's just talk real quickly about arrays. PHP, in PHP and most all languages, loops and arrays tend to just go together like, like peanut butter and jelly. They're just perfect for each other. Since an array is generally a collection of different values that are all related to one another in some way, it's not at all uncommon that we want to be able to go through and perform the same actions on every element of an array. Because of that, because of that repeated nature of wanting to perform the same actions over and over again, loops and arrays just work perfectly together. Let's try uh, something here. Let me go ahead and create a new array. I'm going to call it numbers. I'm going to put some even numbers into it. 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. There we go. And let's say I just wanted to go through and print out all the elements or output all of the elements that are in that array. I could certainly do that with the same for loop that we talked about a second ago. I could say uh, creating a new variable called i, initializing it to 0, which corresponds to the beginning of the array, continuing on while i is less than the count of the numbers. The count function here will tell me the size of the array, so in this case it should tell me 5. For each one of those different elements, what I could do is I could then say echo from the numbers array element i, as the value of i changes, uh, I could use that to then sequentially go through and access each one of the individual elements in that array. If I jump back over to my browser then, it looks like I went through that array just fine. Now, using a for loop like this to go through an array is not at all uncommon. As a matter of fact, it's something that we do just all of the time. It's something that's done so frequently, in fact, that PHP then actually has a different type of for loop available for us that we could use instead. Instead of using this basic, uh, call it a numerically controlled or a counter-controlled for loop, PHP has another type of for loop for us that's available called a for each loop. The for each loop starts off with the keyword for each. Inside the parentheses then, things are a little bit different. Instead of putting together variables for counting and such, what we instead do is we provide it with some type of container, like an array, for example. We use the keyword as, and then we give, simply give it the name of a new variable. This num variable is a brand new variable that I've just made up. It hasn't been uh, initialized or used anywhere previously in the script. What I'm going to then do is I'm going to say echo the num variable followed by a break. And if I jump over to the browser and refresh, 
you can see that I'm getting exactly the same output that I got a moment ago with the counter controlled for loop. The way the for each loop here is actually working is the for each loop sort of has a built in knowledge of arrays. It more or less is automatically for us, kind of on our behalf, going through and performing the same action as what we had written a minute ago as a numerically controlled for loop. The for each loop knows that whatever, right, whatever is right here is actually made up of multiple values and has a size. The for each loop then can automatically go through all of the different values that are stored in that container, in our numbers array in this case, and can then copy each one of those individual values out and put them into our second variable, the num variable. So essentially what happens with the for each loop is it takes the first value from our array, puts it into our variable, and then executes the loop body. After it's done that, it takes the next value out of our array, puts that into our variable, and then executes the loop body. So every time the loop body executes, we have a, the next value, the next sequential value from our container here in our num variable. We don't, with this type of array, have to tell PHP how big the array is. It can figure that out on its own. We don't have to tell it how many times to execute explicitly. It knows automatically to go through the entire array from the first to the last element. So in situations where we have an array, a collection of different values, where we want to perform the same action with every value in the array, a for each loop gives us a much simpler, much more straightforward syntax for being able to, uh, to express that that's exactly what we want to happen. What happens with arrays when, instead of being num numerically indexed, what about with associative arrays? Well, let me just take this, uh, this example that I have here and let me copy it. And instead of doing the numbers array, let's put together an array called, um, let's just call it info, the info array. Let me pre-initialize it with, let's say, some information about a person. I'll say the person's first name is Victrola. I'll say the person's last name is Firecracker. Eh, that's probably good enough. For my for each loop, what I could then do is I could say for info, the name of my array, taking each piece of, that, of data as, uh, maybe I'll call it data, and then I could say print out the data, output it with an echo statement. If I take a look at that in my browser, this is what I get, Victrola and Firecracker. So essentially here, automatically the for each loop with an associative array went through and accessed the values for each one of the separate keys that are stored in my associative array. Well, what if I actually wanted to access the keys as well, as that is itself sort of another type of data? Well, I can also do that if I go back to my for each loop, and instead of simply providing one variable, if I then provide two variables, I'll make a variable called key, I'll use the rocket operator, the equal greater than, and then a second variable called whatever I'd like, I can leave it data, PHP, or the for each loop, in its knowledge of how associative arrays work, will know to automatically take the key for each element of the array, put it into the key variable, and the value that goes along with that key, put it into the data variable. So the first time here the for each loop executes, it will take first name and put that into key. It will take Victrola and put that into data. It will then, on the next iteration, take last name as the key, and Firecracker as the data. So I could then come down and actually make use of both of those variables, key and data, in the actual loop body. I'll have it output key is set to data. And when I come back over and I run it, it tells me first name is set to Victrola, last name is set to Firecracker. So the for each loop right, can be quite handy. It's great for accessing numerically indexed arrays. It's great for accessing associative arrays. Regular for loops and while loops can also be used for accessing arrays, although they pretty much are only particularly useful with numerically indexed arrays, since they are really only capable of being counter controlled, which doesn't make them particularly useful for associative arrays. But all the while, PHP does have these three basic uh, loop structures available to us, while the counter-controlled for and the for each, any of which are available to us whenever we need to be able to perform repeated actions.